Lunch Line with Kelly Pollock and James Dominguez, and welcome back to a Technique Tuesday. Technique Tuesday. Technique Tuesday. Um, first time doing it in a while. Bear with us. We don't um, have the questions in front of us, so if Justin would read some of them, the pertinent ones, what, we, what you guys want to see. What are we working on today, Kelly? You tell me, this is your gig. Today we are going to work on what we saw in the Crawford and Benavides fight, and I think we might touch on the Gary Russell and Leo Santa Cruz. What needs to happen for both of them to be successful? Okay. And so, Kelly, you get to see Kelly punch too. It's not just going to be me, but we're going to work on little things. So, which one do we want to start off with first? What do you want to start with? Uh, let's start with the fight. Okay. Let's start with it. All right. Well, coming from your point of view, what were some of Crawford's strong points? <laughs> where, where, where were we not? Obviously, I think Benavidez gave Crawford an easy fight, especially in the second half. First couple rounds, the style, Crawford picked up on it. It was nothing that Benavidez was doing that it was that impressive. Benavidez is a good fighter. He has good speed. But most of that was just Crawford filling him out in the early part of it. And then you've seen what happened. Benavides didn't change anything. His leg wasn't a factor. Uh, it was just that Crawford figured it out, and then his natural superior skills took over in that fight. And Benavides gave him all the opportunity to roll and gave him all those shots and actually just set himself up for Crawford to look as good as he did the middle and end of the fight. So, What were some of the, some of the things that Crawford did? Is everything he started was with the jab, which I thought was really good. You don't see it a lot. But he started and ended and the jab. He, he doubled that jab. Yes. He worked behind the jab. He just, uh, see, there's more to just doubling the jab. He changed his speed on the jabs. He changed the angle he was throwing them jabs from a good amount. Um, but I'll start off just the, the simple things that I think Benavides did to give Crawford the fight. And a lot of them was this. He stayed there and he tracked out. And he was doing this a lot. And he had been... Cracking down on Crawford. Mm -hmm. And then he would just put his hands up like this, which allowed Crawford to fire the jabs and get off, which he did. Yes. And moved around the ring. Also, he stood there a lot of times, he put his hands up like this. Just turn aside this way. Put his hands up and you would you do it for a softball? Yeah. He threw a jab up here like this, which kept Benavidez's hands up there and get a nice little distance. And then he, he left it for that left hand to the body every time. And then after he threw that left, after Crawford threw that left to the body, he took a step back and Benavides would throw something and be out of range. And he, when he did that, he was when he would step here, this is where he, he moved out. Yep. And he came right off the tracks. So that makes it hard. Bad leg, good leg. It's hard for anybody to to counter that. So Crawford, he switched back and forth because he's an orthodox fighter naturally. Yeah, but or a little while. I don't even think he switched enough to make a difference in a fight or for us to go over it. Um, he was able to do that because he was not in danger at any point. But now, on that side of it, if Benavidez was going to do the stalking like he was, this is what Benavidez, come over here a little bit. This is what Benavidez should have been doing. Throwing that out. Getting the softball stance, it makes a big difference. Especially if he's moving this way, start setting up. That way he could hook off that. He, I think it would have been very good for him, but also when he got in close, to come in and fire to the body against Crawford. Those are things he had the hand speed to do that. And last but not least, also jab. But then you know what? Even if uh, Crawford is moving this way, start leading with that straight right hand. Use that right hand as if it was a jab. And sometimes you could load up on it, and sometimes you could just throw it out there. Because what that will do is start setting up for this. Move this way. The hook. All the time. Or, especially, that way, the body. Those were things that Benavides didn't do. Benavides, I don't know if he was kind of throw combos. When he came in and he'd do this, did he go like this? I don't know if he was trying to tire out uh, Crawford and think uh, Crawford was going to fade. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think remember I, what, what happened was Benavides had his hand up. He left himself open to a lot of body work. Because Crawford was doing things like this. He was moving. Make it jiggle. Um, yeah, that's what I'm saying. And a lot of times, say you're, you're Benavides, and, and all uh, Crawford was doing was he'd keep that jab out like that, and he was shooting, and then he was popping right back. 
a lot of times after that, he started realizing that he that he would throw that there and he would come back with the right hand. Ben Beasley's talent, he already gone. Yeah. He would throw it and, I, and, and Crawford was out of the way. So you come back in again? Yeah, and, and boom, boom, and, and then he would. And he come right back out and he's already gone. So the main thing on this breakdown, Benavidez gave Crawford, if you're just standing there like this the entire time, anybody's going to look good. Yeah, and you're walking him down, you're doing all this stuff right here, and you look like the aggressor, but you're not punching. And you got a guy like Crawford who's that slick and skilled. He's going to look sharp all day, and it made it an easy fight. And guess what? Seventh, eighth round. Now, instead of being in there and making rounds close, now you got to go for a knockout. Now you, your, your whole game plan changes, your whole fight style changes, and you got to go for the kill. And he still didn't do that. If I was him against the Southpaw, if I was Benavidez, I would have been shooting down here, and I would have been looping the right hands all day long. I would have been shooting down here against the Southpaw. And I would have been hooking back upstairs. Cause oh, so it didn't make a difference that he was on his back leg and not his front leg too? That made, that made a big difference, but it, he's going to shift that weight. Yeah, he he's, going, he's going to shift it to the front yeah. when he goes to punch. Um, but what I'm saying is that should have been some of the options in the later part. Fight was over. He, he went, There wasn't enough rounds left for him to win rounds and win the fight. So I, I think that's what he needed to do. But he still didn't do that. He still stayed here. He played turkey in the shell. He did this. He waved on Crawford. None of that was going to help. But I think that's what he needed to do at the end of the fight. He needed to start coming in with that jab, faking, firing, looping over to right. He needed to come in, boom, hook off that, you know, things like that. And actually a 3-2. Yes. He needed the big bombs. Earlier in the fight against the solid paw, slick like Crawford, he needed to stay more active. He needed to keep firing this out. Boom, boom, double the jab. Or I won't do what I'm hitting you. But he needed boom, 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 the hook. Same thing. Boom, boom, hook, you know. Bring it up, leave with that right hand. That always that's a really good punch to throw against the softball. And he had a good enough right hand, and his right hand was fast enough, which we seen in spurts throughout the fight, he was landing those. Yes. Okay? But he just didn't do enough of it. So well, I guess I'm going with that. So then the second half of the fight where he needed a knockout, he didn't do some of those things like I said, the looping. To try to catch Crawford. Crawford was moving this way. He could have still moved it and stepped with him. And he was moving and this way. Here. He was moving here. He was saying, Carol Cloney. Yeah, yeah you're just like you were. You're chasing. You keep moving that way. I'm going to keep turning. You see, I'm always on point. You go that way. I'm here. I'm here. But I'm constantly moving with him. Simple things that could have been done that was not done. Now we can move on to what Crawford was doing. You want? Yeah, well. We talked to Robert Garcia a little bit, and I was kind of asking him what, what he saw. And Robert said too that what he was doing was it was called the 50-50. Um, it's an old, it's an old uh, trick. I know you've done it before. Where you do, you won't commit to a full step. You'll commit to a half step. But what you do is when you're committing, you're here. You're committing instead of making that full step, you're making a partial step right off the back foot. I'm gonna hold your left. Just hold your hip. Like a pad. Just hold it there. Yeah. You, instead of making a full step, like you would, you're making a partial step ah, right there. Bah. And what he's doing now, he's taking that little step, and he's going to counter. Counter back. See that? Right. And what he's doing is not out of position. And he's back again. So shot. pretty much, yeah. Pretty much what you're doing is you're trying to engage your guy. You're still throwing a punch, but you're engaging him to fire. And up here, you already know what you're going to do. And, and I, you're going to take that half step back to come back and counter. You're, you're setting this all set up. And you've done it, right? You yeah. Fight? How, who did you do that with? I mean, well, uh, pretty much, I mean, you got 12 rounds, 10 rounds, 6 rounds, 3 minutes. There's a, there's a lot of time in order to do that. Uh, a lot of times it's just that little thing that you pick up. But yeah, what, what I'm doing is I'm trying to engage you while I'm being aggressive. Yes. Usually when somebody's engaging, they're trying to get somebody engaged, they're kind of luring them in. As we're in this situation, I'm trying to throw to get you to throw, but I'm already waiting for that too. No matter what hand it is either. I'm already, I'm, you know, pretty much, I'm ready to move. So I'm gonna throw this, yeah. So if you go right, I, I can hook. If you go with the jab, I can step, boom. Take a little half step to the angle and come over top. And I thought, I mean, finish the fight with genius. And it's very similar, we're well, sorry about that, but very, very equivalent to if you're not that fast to throw a half punch. It comes down to you can do the same thing with a fake. Yeah. Or you can fake. I can sit there and kind of do the same thing. 
you know, and eventually he's going to come out and throw a jab over the top. Boom, I'm going to come over the top of it like that. So, so what I like with Crawford was the way he was catching punches. He, he's not a defensive guy where he's doing stuff like this. So what happened with Benavides was Benavides with, with swing, he'd catch the punch. Oh. So he'd jab, so he'd jab, he'd come over the same hand. Mm -hmm. And he'd do it the right too. So he'd come over the same hand. Slap it down and do one of these here, like throw it through a jab. And throw it over top yeah. like that. And that changes the pace, like you were saying. Boom. And throw it over top. And I like I like when he threw the right yeah. hand. He threw the right hand. Yeah. You know what though too? Talk about back back foot. Crawford was on the back foot a lot. He was. And you, and you could do that when you have control. But what I mean by that is Crawford kept going to the back leg, back foot. But that's because he was doing the half. The half back. Step. And he was just waiting. Oh, Even so. when if, if he went to the body, he went back. Even with the right hand, he went to the body. He kind of just threw it away. And, and then that position that catapulted him into a hard punch, a good counter. That's what he kept doing a lot too. He would throw them jabs. And, and he kept, you know, doing that. And then, you know, when you get good on your feet, you can still do things and just spin out like that. So, sometimes fighting off that back foot. I, I like the finish. It was, a, it was that straight right. He threw that straight right. Uh, Benavides did. He threw a straight right, and he came right over the top. Right here, finishing. That's, that's boxing 101. Well, you got to make sure you show it from the right angle. Well, yeah. Top ball. So, but he wasn't top ball the whole time. He's an orthodox. He just kept switching back and forth. Because he threw that from the orthodox spot. Let's see if we got any questions. Any questions? He wants to know how the, the deflection counters with the same hand, just like we did. Yeah, throw. What he would do is, off of it. What he would do was, what, what uh, Crawford would do, Kelly's Crawford, I'm going to jab. Is that what you want me to do? Just the yeah, that's what I was just showing. But yeah. he did the hook that way. Do it with oh, the same hand. Yeah. That's what he was doing. And, then, and that helped for a softball and that too, that helped him. That's why he was spinning to his left. Because now I'm there, I can hook and, and I can did. move. I can do it again. And I can move. Uh, I'm right on the spot. Yeah. Oh. And no and matter how fast you throw it, you already got my time again, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and you're right there. Your momentum's when you do that, and I'm going like this. Now I'm also kind of I'm pulling it down in because now I'm here too. Okay, so now he's off balance. I can move. I can yeah. move this way, and I'm here. I'm back at. Um, yeah, he, he was doing a lot of that, but that's those, those are kind of like basics though in boxing when you're a boxer. I did like that. I did like the way he was not committed to that. Whole step, I think it was just different. And a lot of people didn't know what they were seeing. Mm -hmm. You know what I've seen Crawford do a good amount? He was hooking off the jab. Yes. Which for a southpaw, don't, you don't see southpaws hook off the yes. jab that much. But that also goes back again to the fact that because Benavides was just there for him to do that. If, so, some, if you guys don't know how to hook off the jab, we can show you if you want. If you want to go right to a one year old. That's all it is. That's all it is. And if you, and it, sometimes you want to get nasty, you can do the double. Now I'm going to two. Oh. But yeah, I mean, if there's any questions. Uh, you said, how about that gut shot with the left and side step cross? The gut shot that he was landing. You want to get one? Kill it all. Uh, that, that was, he was doing a lot. He was, he was here. And again, he was palm with that, and he would just shoot real quick and, and, and come back. Benavides would be, Boom. Benavides would throw that right, he'd come underneath it. Right. He did that a couple times, but no, he, there was a lot of times Benavides was just standing there, and Crawford would be the first one to engage, and he would come in, and, and then boom, and he fired that. Then there was the other ones where Crawford came in like that, and he threw the jab, and he, he hit him. Well, I'll just throw him out like that. <laughs> like he's throwing a jab. He hit him like that, and then he would move that way. Bottles were taking actually more air, those little shots like that. Yeah, show the one again where he moved, he landed yeah, jab the body and moved. He hit him like that. Yes. Now those don't look as hard as the ones when Benavides just stand there. But let me guarantee you, those were taking a shitload out because Benavides, when you throw a jab, you automatically are breathing out. Yes. So you're throwing that and he's throwing it right there at that solar flex at the same time. And then he's moving back. He's just, all he's got to do is spin that back leg. He throws it. 
And all he's doing is this. And he's on point. Simple things that, that he did like. I, I, I like it. I mean, well, how, did, how did you throw your house down? I mean, you're a different drop, but you get a half step. Like, when you knock, when you hit Miranda with it right now, you hurt him? Yeah. When you finish, you get him with a half, half step. Yeah, half step. How did you well, do you that? How many half steps were right Because he, he threw a jab at you. I threw a jab, too, though. And, yeah. then he, and he threw it. He threw and it. I came back, and then I came over. That's what. And then, and then yeah. he went to my toe. Right? Yeah. So, we're a half step, to... that goes back. No, it's a good question. Half that's what I also say, and I use this term a lot of times. Inches and angles. You go back too far, if I would have made it uh, too, too far back, and I'm back here now, now i got to restart all over again. He's already, and he's got time to bring his hands up, even if he's tired. But that's why the importance is, I'm here, and I'm right back. That's it. That's all I'm going. I'm here, and boom. I'm still in leverage. I'm still with the turn, just the turn of my hip and throwing that right hand. What was the reach difference right. for you guys? I think it was the same. He had long arms. Oh, okay. Yeah. So... Have you got any questions? David got any more? He says, uh, what do you tell the prophet step one to begin to break out of the tent state right now? What was that? What do you tell the prophet step one to begin to break down the spanks if they fight? What do you tell Crawford if you're gonna break down spanks if they fight? What, what instructions would you get Crawford hmm. when fighting Spence? How to beat him? I would have him fight with his boxing. I would have him on that back Spence leg. Spence is again. a southpaw. Yes. Southpaw. So we're both southpaws. Well, no. Yeah. Crawford's not going to stay. Crawford did not go orthodox that much in that fight. Like three times. And again, he went orthodox because he knew he could get away with it. I mean, it would be in a totally different situation. He ain't fought the way like Spence. But... If I was Crawford, I would play that. Crawford got naturally naturally gifted. Crawford liked to engage. He started off at the beginning of that fight. He was boxing. He realized that he could get in there and uh, fight with Benavides too. And it was a little awkward fight uh, style that Benavides had. So a lot of things changed. And Crawford came in and he knew that he could bang a little bit and stay on the inside. So I think it's going to be a little different with, with Spence. Just let me say so what I would do, again, Crawford got he's naturally gifted, he's got speed. I would get that jab all day long. Boom, boom. I would mix it up. It don't matter if Southpaw against Southpaw. You still, yes, you want to stay away, but it's kind of hard against another Southpaw to keep moving this yeah, way. Yeah, it's a bad position. It's good, it's good for you too to get away from a punch, but it's really hard for you to get off a punch. And you know what? I will not be surprised to see cuts in that fight because they're both southpaws. Both southpaws. And both southpaws are lined up. Mm -hmm. Their heads are always hitting. Exactly. But, yeah, so, I mean, it's, it's, it's totally different with two southpaws. I mean, like I said, I can move away from his power hand, but I'm also getting myself out of range. Because, look, look how hard it is. For, like, try to move on me, too, away from my left. But how hard is it for you to really do it? I can't do it Stop, pivot, and get, and get off a good punch. I can't do it either. So... I would be, if I was Crawford, I would here, boom, using that, that natural ability, and I would have, I'd be half stepping. Crawford likes to come in with big shots, I'd be here, back, boom, I would come back over top. Does the way that Spence carries his hands in the fight make a big deal? Because Spence doesn't care, Crawford carries his here. Yeah. We're here with a high guard around the hook, and here so he can deflect, but Spence is more of this guy, yeah. here. So does that make a big difference? No, because Spence is going to block him the same way gonna, as anybody in He's going to catch him right here. Yeah. So I, I do think there is going to be a slow fight starting off. They're both going to be coming out, oh. firing jabs, to, quick jabs to the body. But, you know, down there. Then they're going to be, yeah, they're going to be coming back. They're going to be trying. But I think for Crawford to get a field, he's going to have to be here. In and out. In and Spence out. In and out. Huh? Spence but yeah. But, that, but if he stays, Crawford stays on that back foot, he's getting out of the way. And, he, and he's able to turn. He's got more room to see it. And the size difference between yeah. what, two inches, three inches? Uh, Spence is about 5'10, 5'11, and Crawford's 5'8. They're, they're close in the height. That is it's probably an inch. Um, but that's going to be a very technical fight for a good amount of time. And I see Crawford using his boxing ability more than he did against Benavides. Crawford used it the first two rounds, but I see after that, I see him moving a little bit more. And you know what? Something else I like from Crawford, what he does well, I'll do it from the standing position because it's not so easy. But what he does is if he makes you miss, everything he throws is a combination. He set up the one, two, three for me, Just a one, two, three. Yeah. 
What he does is when he misses, he'll throw a jab. And he'll, jab. he'll slip it and bam, bam. Again. And all he is is boxing 101 at that point, right? Yeah. One, two, three, everything is set. He'll do that one, two, three, two. And it, it's, it seems simple, but it's not. You know what I mean? Is that what you did? You try to keep things simple? You have to. And it depends on the fight again. That, that's a huge thing. And we always bring that up. And it was the saying, like Tyson said, everybody's got a game plan until they can hit. A game plan will change in a fight over and over. And you sometimes will go back to an original game yes. plan. But it may not be something that the opponent's doing. It may be something that you're just not feeling that day. And you have to try to adapt. A lot of times the fighter does it themselves yes. too. The trainer can't get credit for that. I got, I got another question. I'm sorry. Uh, Canelo Triple G, what happened now? Why was Canelo so successful with a guy like Triple G? Because what did he do? That come down of a big reason was. Yeah, I know you're just a question for him. Yeah, natural ability. Okay. So I'm big Triple problem. G. Yeah, Canelo, in my opinion, is a better boxer. Okay. And that means that don't mean that he uh, boxed in by moving around the ring. No, no, I'm talking scared. about in and out. Oh, yeah. You know, slip it. Triple, Down the bottom. Triple G's doing this whole time. Yeah, and Triple G's bouncing back and forth. He's here, he's here, looking for a big shot. But Canelo changed that with the jabs. So Canelo was down here. You know, you jab you? Yeah, I'll jab. Oh, you jab? Yeah, so Canelo, boom, double him up. Sorry. No, he didn't. But double on up. You know, Canelo was shooting to the body. He was coming down, and, and he would fire off big shots. He would loop one and shoot to the body. He had Triple G paranoid. So when Canelo went to, I think we had a question. Jaguar Reed says, uh, "Kelly, do you think Crawford could nullify Spence's jab by staying four zero in crowd his lead foot? Would that allow him to work the body like he did Jose?" I don't think that Crawford. Fights. I don't know how much he spars, so I can't say that, but sparring is different. I don't know how much Spence fights out of the orthodox position to take the chance and, 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 and seize that, or I'm talking about Crawford, oh, yeah. or seize the punches coming, how, how much he adapts to it and gets used from the orthodox stance. To take that chance of turning orthodox and using that against a guy who punches like Spence. I don't see it. I don't think it's a good idea. No, I absolutely don't think that would, that would be what he tries to do. So did you think when, when Triple G was fighting him, when he, when he was jabbing, Triple G was really successful because what he was doing when he was jabbing, he was jabbing the body in the head, right? Yeah. So Canelo, can, you can switch it. Canelo, I'm going to get you. Canelo, from here, or Triple G, and then right to the head, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So what he would do is for him to come to the head, right now. Go to body head. Go to body head. Oh, body head? Go back up. Yeah. Now, the reason with that being, and, and that's a good point you brought up, James, Triple G was winning on a lot of his jabbing, and I understand the big thing was that jab, that jab won him rounds, and everybody was taking away the brutal body work that Canelo was doing. Gosh, huh? But let me explain to you. When you're just standing back, and you know, which Triple G knew all that he was going to do, it's easy to land that jab. Come on, guys. It's simple. If I'm standing here and I, I'm fighting a guy and, and you're worried about getting hit to the body, and, and my concern is getting hit to the body, okay? And throw the hook, like if I throw a right hand, throw the hook to the body. Oh. Boom. And, and I'm worried about that because I just got pounded in the body. Up here, I'm going to say, hmm, guess what, motherfucker? You're not, you're, you're, yeah, yeah, you're not coming in. And you go to throw a punch, oh. bah! do it again. Bah! Yes. And then when you're sitting there making different moves, I'm going to think, I'm going to think, pop, I'm going to do that. For Triple G to land that, it was simple because he knew that he was going to throw that jab and he was waiting for the, the little uh, mistakes and lapses that Canelo was making and that's when he was going to throw the jab because he had no plans on engaging that much with a right hand and a hook. Reason being was he was afraid that he was going to miss and get hit with that body shot that he was getting hit with. So for those couple rounds, and the only thing that changed in that fight was that Canelo was getting a little tired as he does in other fights, and Triple G knew that there was a sense of emergency, that he had to pick it up, and he had to go in and take them body shots and other shots, and that's why he won some of them later rounds. So how did, how did 
Canelo gets the body from Triple G and was throwing those jabs. He was doubling Triple G. Look, he, put, he started just having it. And a lot of times, Canelo would not watch yeah. a fight. He would take one or two jabs, and then he would fire. He yeah. would just fire. Or he would come down, he would throw down, he would start with the right hand, and hook. So and that's like, what he was doing. So like you said, to win a double, triple, or quadruple jab is not the best thing to do against a good counterpuncher. Because they pick your target, right? Exactly. And what comes down to that at the end of the thing is that you got to take the chance. Canelo took the chance, he would have kept getting picked with those jabs. Canelo came in, he landed the body shots because he took the chance and he had good defense ability. And the same went with the end of the fight. Yeah. Triple G knew that he had to do something quickly and change how that was going. And that's why he started going through it. He took some of them body shots, yeah. but he started landing. And Canelo was getting a little tired at that point. That's a good question. Right. First one from Davis. What does Leo Santa Cruz do against Gary Russell? How does volume work versus oh, that's, I think we can do that. This, this is where we differ. In we, I have Leo Santa Cruz do that very well. So I'm not yeah. I'll show you. We'll show. We'll show each. We'll show you guys uh, each of their advantages because yeah. we don't have a winner. We just kind of. We're kind of. Kelly's going to go on Gary Russell's sweet power punching style, and I'm going to go on Leo Santa Cruz's power and volume. Okay. So what? What Leo? You don't know, hold the mitts up. Put your hands up. What Leo's gonna do, he's gonna jab. Very rough stuff. Yeah. What Leo does is, and a big problem he does is this. If you ever see Leo, he shakes that hand before. So he's gonna jab, jab, jab. He's gonna start this and then back out. He's gonna do that. And what's Gary gonna do? Now, where this changes is you're gonna have a guy slip who's gonna be in there. He's gonna be fired. He's gonna be fired. And Leo's gonna fire and quick. Okay. Neil's a heavy, a, hand, a high hand. A high hand, but it don't matter. When some, yeah. them, when some of them jabs start getting through and popping that snout and start sending the sharp pain through the, the front of your face and into the back of your head, and you got a guy who's just waiting, so you know you're coming to punch, but every time you keep coming in, bah, you got a guy firing like that, and then you start throwing those and he does one of these. Boom! And, and, you see that? And he throws it up, and then boom, out of the way. And then it starts countering you and hit you with those. It's natural instinct uh, and it happens to a lot of volume punchers. We, I, I want to go back myself. I think it would be something interesting to see when a volume puncher fought uh, a slick fighter, the punch rate and how it went down. That's going to be the difference. I think Santa Cruz is going to hesitate that when he keeps coming in with the one, two, three, one, two, three, and you got a guy like this popping, popping and moving and, and, and then sliding over hitting you with that. And you start taking those little dings, nothing that's gonna rock you real bad, but you start seeing the little flash of white light. How does your nose your nose is bleeding, you're all cut up, you're all busted up. How does Gary account for the, the power though that's coming at him? Because every punch you go throw is hard and it's, it hurts. I think against uh who did the last fight uh, well Jojo. Jojo, Jojo Diaz. Diaz hurt him multiple times, he didn't hit nothing like Leo. But not that much, and, and Jojo Diaz threw a lot of punches, and Gary Russell threw a lot of punches. That right there being said, Gary Russell, we know, can go 12 hard rounds. I mean, Leo, he doesn't even, well, I know. He doesn't win. That's but, a guy that 1,200 punches. But you've seen fight. what those speed punches started doing to Jojo Diaz. Yeah. Listen, uh, I know where you're coming from, and I see your point. That when I think that punch volume, and I think by the sixth or seventh round, that with Santa Cruz, who's used to overpowering and overdominating and punch that and wearing his guys down, when he sees that. Gary Russell's still firing off some very fast left hands and hitting them in the snout, hitting them to the body, and he's not getting tired, that his punches are not getting slower. I think that's going to suck the life out of him, just like it did with Diaz. That's my opinion. I mean, yeah, I mean, I can, I can actually see, I see what you're saying. I think the fight, so it's a 50-50 fight. That's how I think. Yeah. But I, I, I would lean towards Leo just because of the experience factor. He, he's fought more regular. Gary takes two, three. But Gary fights well, some awesome. guys. Lomachenko. Low, I mean, I, I know I'm not to compare Lomachenko to uh, Leo Santa Cruz, but Gary, but Lomachenko overpowered Gary Russell's volume punch. Yeah. He put, he hit him three to one. But yeah, but you're talking two different. But you're talking did, a bird and a bee. But he did come right to him. To, he came yeah, to him. But Lomachenko is totally different. The angles and the speed of the punches and the footwork. So you think, you think Lomachenko can punch harder than Santa Cruz? No, I think he could have been as fast, but or every bit as hard. But I'm also saying it's two different angles coming in. You're talking about a guy, standard guy who's coming right down yeah. and firing, and you're talking about a guy who is over here in a split second. He's over here yeah, and he's, he's firing. Doing from, he's doing stuff like this. Yeah, and, and he's firing up from all different angles. Totally different um, 
So you, you can use the compare that as well. What I do like from Leo Santa Cruz is, and this is going to set the big difference too, is he, Leo does a lot, a lot of things like Floyd. I'm not comparing the two, but the way they catch punches. Um, Gary Russell for that jab, he'll catch with the same hand come over time. I like that. He does. And he'll, he'll hook off it too. Bang, 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 he'll yeah. hook off, and which just throws fighters off. And what I like about Gary Russell is the fact that he'll take and he'll trade. Yes. And he takes punches. Do you think the size difference is going to matter? No. Leo, Leo's a lot taller, bigger. That's what happened. Okay. Um, I, I, what's that? Yeah. Uh, Steve William Thompson said, Bud had a problem finding his range early on with Benavides. How much more difficult will it be for him to do that against a guy like Carroll who won't give up a tight like Benavides? No, he wasn't finding. He was, he was just, he was, he, for the very, <coughs> middle part of the first round. He knew how that fight was going to go. But to be, fa to be fair, both fighters, Errol and Crawford, are slow starters. Yeah. It takes them two or three rounds to get into a rhythm and figure each other out. So you're going to see a boring-ass fight for the next three rounds. Yeah, and it may take them a little longer, but that's going to be the fun of it. You know, who picks it up first? That's the fun in all fights. I think Be I think Bebo is gonna outwork him, outclass him. I I mean, you said yourself, Beatroff is a, a, a murderous puncher. I know. Yeah, I just think he has to be careful in that. But I do. But I think he's really stiff. I mean, Beatroff is stiff and he's static. You see a lot of this from him. You see a lot of this. A lot yeah. of old eighties Russian but style. He, but and I agree with you one hundred percent. But he he fires some fast punches and hard punches out of that. It's like you know what it's he like. Does. Tell me. Tell me if you don't see it this way. It's like the old Russian style versus the new Russian style. Have you, you ever kind of fit with Bebo on him? Yeah. Bebo's a different generation almost. You know what I mean? I guess, yeah. What I'm saying is this on that. Bebo, I think it will box the shit out of better Bebo. I think I he, honestly hit, do. he hit just as hard. I, I, I think he's, he's going to do it. But do not be surprised. It's one of the fights where, where, where it's very possible for Bebo to get caught either out cold or like buckled and changed the yes. whole game plan of, of the fight, I think it could definitely be one of them fights. And that's all I'm saying. Yeah, my thing I is I expect this. people to win. My thing is this, Peterhoff's chin's not that good either. No, it's not. He got dropped and was hurt by Callum Johnson, and Peterhoff hits a lot harder than Callum Johnson. We've seen the guy punch. You know that he's fighting um, Pascal. B-ball is fighting December 14th against Pascal now. That's a good fight. But I, I think, I think it's the old Russian regime against the new Russian style. You know what I mean? It's the old Russian new... I, I don't know. I, I think it's going to be a good fight. But hey, that was a good technique too. It was. It was. Oh, we're going to go to our regular show now? We're not waiting for you to All right, guys, we are back. Do you have an accent or? What was you laughing about? Oh. Dead air space. Sorry, guys, but we're here. I'm liking a little technology we got going, too, man. We're, we're switching cameras. Y'all notice that? Yeah, we have multi camera. Thanks, Justin. But yeah. Uh -uh. Yeah, we took the credit for that. I was pretty ignorant. You know, I think we've done a lot of Technique Tuesdays before, but I think cutting them a little short because they can get long, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and today was a day where we had to. And I'm getting, we're getting really old, you know what I mean? So, if there's any boxing questions or ghost questions. Let's well, we're, go we're going to bring it back to that. Um, we're going we're gonna to keep doing Technique Tuesdays yes, for the duration. We are. We'll start Maybe doing. every other week again. Um, Let me bring the show up real quick, guys. Sorry, it's taking a minute to bring the show up. All right. Okay. Yep. And then, um, all right, guys, we are here. Um, in Inuway Piano knockout. How did that happen? Oh, man, we missed that. Inuway and Piano. What I will tell you guys on the Inuway Piano knockout <coughs> is Piano is a, a, a world champion, was. But I think Inuway is just a different level of fighter. Don't you think so? For, for the weight that he's at, yeah. Um, again, it's, you know, and, and I'm going to sound like one of them guys, and, I, and I, I truly don't give a shit. Yeah. Um, 
but I unfortunately, in any ways, uh, situation, he's not in a, a good weight class, and, uh, and he don't have, and he don't have any really good weight classes. Well, I'm sorry, um, it's really hard for me. My personal opinion. I'm not saying this where anybody else th- should think that they have to feel that way. Yeah, I'm. I'm not. He he's doing what he's doing, and and he's <coughs> he's the best at his weight. But I am not. I'm more impressed with somebody like a Spence or a Crawford or or mm-hmm. a Lomachenko. What do you think about like they're talking about right now? Inouye going up and fighting Dogbo, the African kid. That is an amazing fight coming. <coughs> and Dogbo, Dogbo <coughs> is. Your quintessential um, brawler. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's all over the I place. He hits, hard. he hits hard. He's, he hits at all different angles. And he's not skilled, but I really don't see Inouye having a hard time with him because I think that fits right into Inouye's wheelhouse. Somebody that's a little wild. and Because, you know, that style of fighting, that, that great amateur pedigree or that great fits right into it. How did you do with guys that were wild? You, you, you lit them up that came at you bro, strong. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I have one guy actually who could take a hell of a shot too, man. I swear to God, I hit him with every. Mexican on the other dude? card, yeah, no, 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 white dude. I had I had a Mexican dude too. Yeah, but I fought Bobby Hurt Sanchez. Your hands, huh? Yeah, Did well, you say actually, you fought Bobby Sanchez? No, not Bobby. Uh, Frank Francisco, Frankie Sanchez. Oh, okay. You said Bobby. My third pro fight, it was a Mexican. I take that back. Yeah. And it was on the under in Denver, Colorado, on the undercard of Stevie Johnson. Okay. And, uh, I hit this. He was wild. He he was wilder and shit. And. Um, Somebody who I, who I I threw, I mean, I could have threw a punch in the air and I would hit yeah. him in the nose. Yeah. And I hit him with everything. But every time I hit him, man, he just kept grunting. And, like, blood was squirting out of his nose and from his eye. Were you getting worried? And, yeah, and he was throwing wild. And, like, some of them, you know, you're blocking. But that's hard with a wild puncher. Yeah. And I'm picking him off. But then, like, a couple of them that I really didn't see till like, last second yeah. from right past me like this, I'm going, I, I just, where did that come from? And, um. <laughs> Yeah, that was tiring because you're just hitting that dude. And at that stage, your third pro fight, and this is where I keep getting on people about Lomachenko fighting yeah. for a world title in a second fight. It's like an amateur fight. Yeah. Those fights at that stage are just like an amateur fight. I mean, what I mean by that is it goes fast. Everything happens in a blink. Everybody's out there just firing away to get points as quick yeah. as they can. And that's what was hard about it. But I'm hitting this dude, and I'm like, why ain't he falling down? I know I had power. Yeah. And, uh, just some people are like that, huh? But by the third round, though, he had he had seen enough. I hit him with a right hand, and, and uh, the referee stopped it. He went down. And... Bobby said, Kelly, how long do you think it will take to make that Crawford and Spence happen? I think it's how if if Top Rank and, and Al Heyman can get together, and I don't think they have a problem making fights together. I would be very uh, – I would be – have that fight in emergency mode right now, though. If I was promoters, that's a big fight for boxing. Yeah. That's what people want to see. I don't really see Spence staying around too long at welterweight. No. I think that he, Spence can make some big money up at middleweight. But that's not the way you want to go, man. No. Canelo, uh, Spence will get I raped agree. by Canelo. I agree. And you got the, the doofuses out there that are saying no. But if I was Spence, I would stay as long as I can before it, now, before it affects him. And he, he tries to make weight. He kills himself to make 147, and he's drained, yes. and he gets beat by Crawford. Now, now your your stock goes down too. Well, and we know how big Spence gets. We saw him in person multiple, what, few times already. And he's a big guy. I mean, I'm not saying like he's having trouble making weight because I don't know. We don't know if he has trouble making. But what I'm saying is he is a big guy, and big guys like that have a lot more trouble. But I I think Errol Spence is made to order for a guy like Canelo Alvarez. Mm-hmm. I agree. He's less. He he doesn't hit as hard as Triple G. He may be a little quicker than Triple G. I don't know. But he is not as experienced as Triple G, and that's a problem. Triple G is fast. Triple G is a weird fast too. He's he's his timing's off. You can't catch his timing. Mm. You know, that's yeah, and he's not like. slow by no means. But uh, Bobby, I agree with you. I think Crawford beats Spence, and but I don't think I, I don't I don't know jo- Joel. You know what? Kelly has Spence in this fight, right? I do, but I, I, have, I, I have the fight a lot closer than what I used to have it. Yeah. And I'm not going off the Benavidez fight. I would not, not. No, and I would not bet on it. I wouldn't like say, hey, it's going to happen. But you know what? Spence is a gifted fighter. I just don't think. I just think this would be, I think it's a, actually, and I like it better because I think it's more of an entertaining fight now. Yeah. I, I have it evenly matched um, with me leaning more towards Spence because of the natural strength. Yes. <clears throat> uh, Crawford does have bad habits of staying in there a little too long. And I think those will affect him. 
Yeah. And, and he will get caught up in some of that with Spence. Um, Spence is faster than Benavidez. We have to understand that. Benavidez yeah. landed a lot of straight right hands. <clears throat> uh, Steve said, James showed us his blinding speed tonight. Awesome. Oh, he's bullshitting. Who said that? Steve Stoller, my blinding speed. Uh, that's that's 40-year-old speed, Steve. Who? Well, which one of you guys kept calling out Steve Stoller for? What? Who who you guys picking on? You kept saying, all right, Steve Stoller. No, no, we weren't picking nobody. Steve was on our side. Oh, Steve okay. was picking, helping me roast somebody. Um. E- yeah, Dame says easy with the question marks. Um, what do you think about Mayweather versus Khabib? How will that affect boxing? I don't see that happening, Christian. I mean, there's no, there's nothing in it. And the um, only people that want to see that is MMA fans. And Khabib would get the shit beat out of him by a guy like Mayweather in yeah. boxing. You know what I mean? That just, I don't know. There's gonna be another one of those. Now, if you're say in a cage, you're talking about. Hey, James, how does Crawford beat him? Oh shit! Put me on the fucking spot, right? How do, I, I'll tell you how Crawford beats Errol Spence. Where boxing. Are you these at? Right here on, on the punchline question. Um, boxing, 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 boxing. Crawford's going to have to box Errol Spence. He's, if you go into a shootout with Errol Spence, you're going to lose. What I, yeah, I'm going off of like what we just broke down in Technique Tuesday. Yeah. I think Crawford's going to have to be hesitant in a good way. And that, what I mean by that is he's yeah. going to have to stay back, put that weight on the back leg, stay back. Paul, without pawn, you know, keep that jab hand out, firing him with jabs, yeah. and start picking up. Crawford is very intelligent, and he's, and he's got the natural reaction time, and to start picking up the little shots and, and start hopefully to catch Spence coming in. I, I, I don't think that it's a great idea for Crawford to sit there, though, like he did against Benavidez and get on the inside and, and try to shoe shine to the body and come up with different crazy combos because yeah. that could end the night quickly. What, but um, I think it's a really good tactical matchup. I, I really do. I think it's going to be a fun boxing. Some of the uh, casual fans and, and uh, guys that just like to pick it up because they know they're two big names are going to be like boring fight for a while. I think I think it's going to be boring for a little while. I think there's going to be some exciting moments, but I see a very tactical fight down to, to at least the later rounds. King William Thompson. Wants to know what's the current holdup on Mikey versus Loma? Any chance to get made after Loma's next fight? Want to tell him why? You want to get into it? I it, it is, and it's really obvious. If people follow the sport, Garcia's and Top Rank don't get along. Um, they they won't. Um, Top Rank. I don't want to give any names. We're not going to give names, but we were at the Lomachenko fight, and an executive from Top Rank said they won't deal with Mikey, right? Yeah. And it, it, what it has to do is there was a lot that lawsuit. It has to do with that lawsuit those years ago, and they still hold some bad blood over that, yeah. you know? And it, they, Robert's fighters, Robert Garcia's fighters can get on top rank cards, just not Mikey. Yeah. And I think it's going to mainly come down to uh, how big the boxing people and the demand for the fight and is. And how and much money exactly. they can make out of this. Dude, but personally, here's, I'm going to say it. I think Crawford might be a little too big. And Robert Garcia has said the same thing on Ellie the other day that Crawford was too big. You know, that might be a case. He's just too big. It is. I mean, you're talking a kid who's yet to fight at welterweight. You're talking about a kid who's only had one fight at 140. Yeah. If Mikey decides to make that move, going back on it, he's not crazy. Yeah. He's not stupid. He's he's smart. He's a really smart fighter for doing that. Yes. Um, but right now, we're just kind of like hopping into something that's really not realistic. No. Hi, hi Rebecca. Tell Scott to check his PayPal again, and thank you guys for everything. Um, t- too big a step up for Mikey? I don't know if it's too big of a step up. Step up. They've, had, they've had experiences with each other over the years as amateurs. I mean, it's different, but that still, it's Crawford, not a big, it, Crawford's it, it, not a big step up. Crawford's yeah. just a bigger man. Crawford beat him in the amateurs. Well, I got beat by guys in the amateurs and came back to knock him out in the pros yes. for a world title. I don't so. think anybody's a big step up for Mikey. I think he's a, he's a pound for pound guy right now. I don't think anybody's a step up. Yeah. I mean, if, if people are giving him a shot with Errol Spence, why not give him a shot at Crawford? I just Oh, think- yeah, especially Spence is a bigger puncher than Crawford. Yeah. Uh, Davis says, guys, ESPN did 2.5 million views. It raised the bar. Absolutely. 2.8? Uh, it was 2.8? Uh, and, and it has. It, yes. It, it has. Uh, that, obviously, that's why your HBOs are struggling. We went over this, what was that, two weeks ago? Yes. Um, your, your big networks are, are kind of like HBO was struggling. First of all, Showtime's putting on big fights. But then you have the ESPN, you have the apps, you have the yeah. DAZ, uh, the Zone app. I like um, that. I yeah, like DAZN. that. Yeah, um, I like all the apps. I'm not going to lie. You know what I mean? I yeah, like I them mean, all. You're going to see a fight. I got a question for you, though, Kelly. There's a good question here for you. 
Um, no, Chris, I, I agree with skill. I, size too. I, I agree with that. I think Crawford's a big guy. He really is. We've seen him. He is. A, he's a good sized guy, isn't he? Yeah, he is. And, and uh, we've been with Mikey a lot. Mikey is not a very big guy. I mean, he, he in between fights, but when he he comes down, yeah. he's a small guy. But um, uh, Sergio says, um, why Al Heyman letting the stable gather dust? Spence to Charlos are unknown, and that's Heyman's fault. You know, Sergio, a lot of it is politics and boxing. Heyman is not the most liked guy in the sport, and I think a lot and what they I think a lot of promoters and networks are kind of trying to push him out a little bit. I mean, it's not going to work, but I, I like what Heyman's doing with the sport myself. I, I do too, and I, and I I don't know how far as to go the saying that Spence and the Charlos are unheard of. Uh, I would say Spence is more than than uh, or not Spence. Charlos mm-hmm. more than Spence. So, uh, but hey, let it keep going the way it's doing. I mean. We're just saying now, like, the, the numbers for these uh, networks are picking up big time of people yes. watching. Yes, we're getting a whole new set of fans in this sport. Darren, this is a good one. James, me and you talked about this. He says, how realistic is a Crawford-Spence fight being that it would have to be a pay-per-view fight to you, pay-per-view fight uh, stars yet? I don't think they, it will be pay-per-view. I don't think that's a pay-per-view type fight. To. I think that's a Showtime type fight. You know what I mean? Here's my take. Here's my take on, on Crawford's future. And I think we talked about yes. this. Um, right now, Crawford's in a good position. He's, he's kind of like how Mikey Garcia is, in my opinion, at a lower weight class. Um, if, I was, if I was Crawford, I would shoot for that Spence fight now. I don't want to hear it's too early. He just went to the welterweight division. He fought Horn. Horn big, is big guy. Big guy. Huge welterweight. Who is good enough and, and respectable enough? I mean, he beat a very close fight with Manny Pacquiao, which everybody's saying, oh, I can't wait to see Manny Pacquiao fight this guy because Manny Pacquiao looked good his last fight. Again, the fans got a short-term memory. But Horn, big guy. Then he fought Benavidez, six foot tall, an undefeated prospect that, that is really good who comes from a, a, a lineage. Yeah, a huge boxing family. I think that he, if he, if he got his fill for Walter weight, he did more than anybody else in that weight class. He fought the two biggest guys so far, in my opinion. Yeah. I think take the Spence fight. I hear rumblings of, of him fighting Khan. Dude, I, that's a fight that they don't want, man. You don't want that fight. Khan is probably the best fighter in boxing right now. Hand speed wise, and, and you go to just the way he fights. But you he, know, everybody's going to shit on you right now. Say, his fucking chin, because, his fucking chin. That's where I'm going next. Granted, yeah, his chin. Now, I don't think a lot of it has to do with chin. I think he just got caught with good, really good shots. And I think did. a lot of it's him always trying to make weight, being too that, big. That and, and just getting weight. caught. But you have to like break it down and say, well, it happened too many times, though. So if it ain't the chin, he just has bad defense or, or a big lapse in defense. Yeah, but you I have do, to go that route because he gets too many times. But the one thing I do want to clear up what we, what we were talking about a little bit earlier, I do not think Mikey Garcia is out of the realm of being able to fight either one of these guys. I think Mikey is just as talented as both of them. No, Mikey even is, more. Even more talented in them. Mikey's in the best situation of all of them. Mikey could afford to take a fight up against one of them guys at welterweight and make a big, a huge payday. And if he loses, he's still uh, a lightweight champ of the world or, or junior welterweight champ of the world. Agreed. And he can go back down to those and weight classes. And he keeps classes. his belts and he goes right back. And no, and, and the diehard boxing people are not going to look at him any less because they know he jumped up to fight pound for pound kings. Well, let's, let's stop there. You jumped up two weight classes to fight Bernard Hopkins, right? Yeah. And nobody thinks about that. Oh, Kelly Pavlik got schooled by Bernard Hopkins. You jumped up two fucking weight classes from 160 to 175. Yet people forget that. I know, but that's how. But that's what was. they're going to do with him. And I ducked Paul Williams, but I wouldn't fight. So you ducked. Edward. Wait a minute, you. What? I ducked Kelly, a welterweight. Kelly, can you, you're telling me you ducked a welterweight mm-hmm. to go fight a, a middleweight yeah. that walks around at 210 pounds? Yeah, it's a light heavyweight at the time. Yeah, light heavyweight. But that's but going on with with uh, the Khan um, thing. Yeah. I, I I just think it's a fight. Khan right now is not really a top top name in a sport. He's just making this comeback now. I I believe so. And I think that's just a danger. I don't see Crawford winning that fight in the boxing. I, and if I see Crawford winning is if he catches Khan and knocks him out. That's the only way. That's the only way I see Spence beating yeah. Khan can or you, anybody else beating Khan right now. King Wayne Thompson, I think Khan is too easily timed. I, I, don't, I don't see that. I, yeah. I, I saw him beating the shit out of Canelo, who arguably is 
one of the better boxers in the sport yeah, until maybe, he got caught by a bigger guy. But he does, you know what? And now I'm starting to think about he does it. get caught with that jab. He gets caught. Yes. And he gets knocked out. But, but um, Khan just gets reckless. Yeah. And you know what? That's just part of the way he fights. He, with Khan, you're either going to get something really awesome or you're going to get something really bad. Yeah, but I think overall, I mean, look at the fights that Khan lost. He was winning. Khan is, but it's a fight that I think Crawford don't need. He yeah. don't need it. Um, at least not right now, unless Khan goes out and does something spectacular yeah. against somebody else, then I would take that. So my thing would be this. Take the fight with Spence. Or if you're not going to take it with Spence, take it with one of the other top – well, try to call out a Thurman. Here take go. it with one of the hey, other hey, champs. here's Sergio. Khan has no chin. He is over the hill. Okay. He's over the hill. I'm not even answering that. 2000, what, 2004 Olympian? Yeah, I'm not even answering it. <laughs> Come on, Sergio. Um, someone needs to snipe. Javier, we, we, we know, Palos, we know that, dude. Yeah. But we're talking about his boxing ability, and you cannot deny that, that he is probably one of the pound-for-pound pound best fighters skill-wise in the sport today. Oh, King said, you guys think given that Khan beats Brooke? I see absolutely he beats Brooke. Yeah. I, 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 if, there, if, if Brooke had a third eye in that, he would have got that broke too in that fight. Yep. I don't, I, Steve. I don't know. I don't see Colin with lazy, lazy right mm -hmm. hands. I think he. I. I. I mean, you're gonna get hit. I don't know. I just think that he's better than people think. I, I really do. Crawford knocks out Con and beats Spence. Ah, fuck. I, I wouldn't bet on it. I can't bet on that. You know. I don't know, man. But you got to remember too. These guys. Um, Spence is not this big, overwhelming knockout puncher. He builds up attrition over a time period and, and knocks you. He, Con, Amir Khan is not Ascasio. He's not, you know what I mean? He's not that yeah. guy. So oh, I did, Yeah, Hugger. I mean, pretty much all the guys. He was beating the shit out of uh, Canelo. He, he beats everybody up, and then, you know, it, it, either you're going to get something good or bad with him. But you got to remember this. Khan fought help out Roy real quick. Okay, Khan fought Amir Khan, right? Or not Amir Khan. Khan fought Marcos Maidana, who was the hardest puncher in the 140 division at the time. And he survived that. So a lot of time it's how you get caught. I don't think it's who catches you. Um, let's let's go back to Kelly's fight. Kelly got dropped by um Jermaine Taylor, right? Who's not as big puncher as Edison Randa. Yet Edison Randa, who was the boogeyman of the 2000s who was every bit the hardest puncher in the division at the time, um, couldn't drop Kelly. I think a lot of the time, that's how you get caught. And that was. But Sergio, I think what happens is you get really personal involved and you shit on fighters. And that's just really not good. I mean, if you're starting to do a show yourself, you guys, you, you, have, you can't shit on guys personally. That just, why, why, why should he come? Sergio, I mean, why should he? He's still making money and he's still doing good. And I, a lot of times it's not who's punching you, it's it's how you're being punched. And I know Mikey wants, and Javi, I, Pelos, I know Mikey wants that Spence fight, and I know that, I and he, and I, I give him a way better shot than everybody else has given him. Mikey's one of the most gifted fighters in the world. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Uh, yeah, you are, Sergio. You're shitting on the guy. I mean, you're you're shitting on. Um, you want to what was it? Snipe him like JFK and uh, some other shit about. You, if you've never fought, you cannot sit here and tell a fighter it. You need to retire. That's not your business. It's not your concern. You don't have that right to tell a person that they need to retire. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just saying that. Until you've been in that position, I, I think Khan still has some good fights out there. Win or, win or loss, win or lose with Amir Khan, you're going to get something good out of him. You're going to get a fight out of him, and that's all you can ask for. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for coming, bro. I appreciate it. How, how do you know he isn't good anymore, Sergio? Okay. Anyway, um, yeah, ask Phil Greco how good Khan is. 38 second knockout. What was Phil? 25 and 1 at the time? And Cody, I agree with you. I, I agree. I agree. And I agree, Cody. That was 
really good comment. But I, I just think it's a real shit thing for, for boxing fans to do, to put a letter grade on fighters, call them washed up, especially when you have never put gloves on and got into a ring yourself. I think it's a real fucking shitty thing to do. And I take it, I, I take personal offense to it. You don't get that right. Everybody taps him. My Donna taps him on the chin. He does a Judah dance. No, it's, it's, Le Greco is not a measure of Mir, but it shows what Amir is still capable of. It, and that's the thing. It shows what he, uh, Kelly had to go help out with something. He'll be right back, guys. So, um, um, yeah, it's not a, it's not a measure, but it shows what he's capable of in the sport. Anybody can be hurt, anybody can knocked out, but I'm not going to shit on a fighter's career and I'm not going to say he's overrated or put a letter grade because I've never fought in the pro ranks. I had an amateur career. I don't have the right to say anything about any fighter like that. So um, unless you have that skill of Amir Khan, you better, it's just better to shut up about it. You just did, Sergio. Uh, Khan has never looked like he wasn't in the fight in, in any fights. I agree, Jeff. He's win or lose. Win or lose with Amir Khan, you're going to get a fight out of him. And that's what I want. And that's what fans want. They want somebody who's going to try. I would rather have 100 Amir Khans than I would, you know, than I would, um, well, let's just say it, um, 100 Gary Russells that, that, that's doing just enough to win. And I agree, Damon. Well, I mean, that's your opinion. And he does have the fastest hands in boxing. I think him and Gary Russell might be the two fastest fighters in the sport still. Um, Lomachenko, too. But it's a different kind of speed than Lomachenko. If you guys watch, Lomachenko's fast, but Gary Russell and Amir Khan have a different kind of speed. It's a snapping, fast, quick speed. If you missed anything, I said I think it's disrespectful for somebody who's never fought before to shit on a fighter's career or, or shit on them or, or put a letter grade on a fighter. Yeah, but going on the speed thing, I have to go back with... Uh, I can't say that um, Conor and Gary Russell as fast as uh, Lomachenko. I said it's a different kind of speed. Yeah, but I can't say that either because what I'm saying, I see Lomachenko throw punches and they're fast. I think the issue why it seems like it's a different speed is because the footwork of Lomachenko and the rest of his body movements take away his actual punching speed. Yeah. You know what I mean? It takes your attention off how fast he really is. Delilah said she needs you to sit up, Kelly. There you go, Delilah. There we go. I put the sleeves up for you. Lomachenko's fast because he's fluid. Uh, yes, Nicholas, I would agree with that, but it's also he's just fast. He's fast. fluid. He's fast. Yeah, he's fast. His feet, his, you know, a lot of things that Lomachenko does... He punches with his hips and his feet, and if you if you utilize your hips, your hands move quicker yeah. too. A lot of that's an illusion, isn't it? Yeah, but what I'm saying that's that's it. I said because his footwork and his, his head movement and body movement so fast, it takes away from his hand speed. And when he throws the punches, it, do, it don't look compared to the rest of his body movement. Yeah. Well, thing is too, Sergio Khan went toe to toe with everyone legit at 140. What are you talking about, homie? It's well known. Floyd avoided Khan, not ducked, avoided. And the thing is this too, like I said. It's how you, you, Khan sat there and he took everything from Marcos Maidana, who, who was legitimately one of the hardest punchers in the division. It just depends. And a lot of, let me, and let me tell you this too. Amir Khan is a big, big guy. He's five foot ten he and is, a half. And he can hit. Okay. But when you are pulling weight up from 135 and you're weakened at weight, it makes a difference with your chin. And then let's talk about Canelo. He went up to 155 from 147, a weight that he shouldn't have fought at. He, at 160 almost, right? Yeah. Come on, man. I'm just going to say this, and I, and I don't care who it offends. If you're going to for one minute say that Khan is not possibly the best pound-for-pound pound fighter after watching all his fights and watching it, even the ones he lost, how he was winning, and you're going to knock anything on his boxing style, knock anything other than his chin, you're absolutely crazy, and, and, and you're just biased or you just want to, you want an argument. The proof is is there for you guys. Go back and watch all of his fights. That's all I got to say against top guys. That, that's all I'm going to say on that, and I'll leave it at that. But you have to go get your brain examined if you're going to say that yeah. he's not that so, good. a guy like Amir Khan, who wasn't at 47 very long, moved up to 60, basically 57, right, to fight uh, 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 Canelo, who is a brutal puncher, and he boxed the fuck out of him for six rounds, he and he got caught finally. Can, I think Amir Khan had every round in the bag. And you're talking about point. Canelo who outboxed Everybody. a lot of people. 
Yeah. Everybody. So, I mean, that's that's like that. that the only other one was Floyd. And come on, it was Floyd. Floyd, Floyd. I mean, for his defense, Freddie never helped. You know what? Well, Kevin, let's be honest. Getting Freddie Roach to help you with defense is like getting dancing lessons from Christopher Reeves. Do you know what I mean? Let's be honest. Freddie Roach didn't have a fucking defense. How are you going to teach defense when you don't have a fucking defense, right? Really? And but I'm just saying. I mean, you, did, was Christopher Reeves? He's dead. Who's he going to tell? No, it's true. This. Uh, <laughs> Khan has never been outpointed in my opinion. Peterson, Robert, you can only beat him once by, by Kale. And that's true, Dan. Either you're going to, he's, I like Amir Khan because either he's going to get you or you're going to get him. Yeah. And I'm just going to go back on that with Khan, what I said earlier, because I just really want to get it out there. It's not an argument to say, to argue with us about as far as his talent and how good he is. No. He's definitely one of the, the best fighters out there, hand speed, everything. Um, again, he's been caught, yes. Yeah. Now, you know, we say he's been caught good. Yeah, I think it still comes down to chin, or maybe he he does have a bad time with timing. Yes, um, he does. And, uh, and I think it's I, – I think to a certain point, Amir Khan never adapted out of that amateur style a little bit. You know what I mean? He stays yeah. in the pocket just a little too long. Uh, Nicholas said a guy like Emmanuel Stewart would have been perfect for Khan. I agree, Nicholas, but I think Joe Goosen's doing a great job with Amir Khan right now. And Joe Goosen, by far, is one of the elite trainers in the sport. And Joe Goosen has a good mix of defense and offense. Yeah. I mean, you're not going to get slick defense out of Joe Goosen. You're going to get a little bit like Diego Corrales. You're going to catch your gloves, you're going to catch your arms, and then he's going to counter the shit out of you. But look what he did with uh, James Tony. He had James Tony. He had Michael Nunn. He had Gabriel Ruelas. And if anybody will tell you, if you go back, guys, to Gabriel Ruelas' fights, he was one of the best defensive fighters in Mexican fighters, other than Orlando Canizales. Well, yeah, you had those. Orlando Canizales, and you had some of those guys. Oh, Orlando. You, Orlando oh, he's a Hall of Famer. Yeah. But go back to Gabriel Ruelas, guys, and look at the defense. I think he's the one that kind of started, like, a lot of the defense now, the guys moving and dancing. But if really, if you go back to Gabriel Ruelas, look, look at the defensive – Look at the defensive, the defense he showed against uh, fucking um, the, oh fuck, Azuma Nelson, or Jesse James Leha, or or Arturo Gotti. I mean, fucking legit. Gabriel was a defensive specialist, and he was good. Reagan, do you think Khan became overconfident at some point in the Canelo fight? He may have. He I mean, has. You're you're having an easy it six rounds. You're yeah. fucking teeing off on him. Exactly. Uh. And that does, you know, uh, now going back on that, I understand and be a complete fighter. So what I'm saying pound for pound, I think if, if Khan had a chin, he's absolutely pound for pound the best fighter out there. If he had a solid chin and didn't get caught like oh, that. Oh, God, yeah. Unfortunately, you know, is it his chin or, or how he gets caught? There's something wrong there. Yeah, yeah there is. And that's not going to make you a, a great fighter. But I can say this. He's dangerous for anybody in the sport. Mm -hmm. And what, all I was going on when I was mentioning was if I was Crawford, that would be a fight that I would stay away from because there's no real need for it. Khan is not the hot man in boxing right now. He's a big, big, a big if. Yeah, he's a big danger. You know, if you were going to think about fighting Khan, let him beat somebody with a big name. Then yes, I would take a chance against Khan. Well, you're going to see Khan against maybe a, a Porter, a Danny Garcia. You're going to see that kind of fight. Or I think a that, Thurman. Or you're I see a Thurman. Yes, but and I, he will fuck Keith Thurman up. But I think that if Crawford's going to take a fight other than Spence right now, that it should be a Thurman, a Porter, yes. one of the other world champions at that weight. Yes. I, I think fighting anybody you, other than that. Do you think these guys are getting in line to fight Crawford though? Would I mean you don't see these guys getting in line? They. I mean, the welterweight division at one point went WWE to avoid fighting Spence. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think Crawford, for all, all intent and purposes, is just as dangerous. Um, Gabby Conazal is Steve. Gabby was a great fighter, too, and he was a bigger puncher than Orlando. But Orlando just had that it factor. You know what I mean? Orlando had that. Orlando Canazales was Lomachenko before Lomachenko. Um, he would make you miss yeah, and, and beat the fuck out of you when he made you miss. Um Sergio said, I saw Carbajal bounce. He was spectacular. Oh, 
Sergio, I love Michael Carball. He's one of my favorites. We had him on the oh, show. Yeah, we, had, we did have him on the show. We had him on the show last year, and I, I fanboyed out, didn't I? Mm-hmm. I knew I knew every inter, every detail about him. Do you remember that? You remember what your mom used to call you back when you were four? <laughs> He's like, how the fuck did you know that? Um, Dan, I just see Converse Brook going exactly the same as Converse Garcia and Converse Cano. I don't see it that Winning way. Winning on point and getting caught and lights out. I don't see it that way. I don't think Spence is, is, is as uh, hard of a hitter as those two guys are, though. I don't think Brook is that kind of puncher either. I see Brook actually taking a lot of beating and and, <laughs> and his eyes uh, <laughs> hopefully staying in his Kenny, pocket. I don't even think he can pass him. He's failed some medical things in the lately. I don't know how they're going to do it. They're going to have to take him to the deepest, darkest part of England to get him right. licensed, man. He's going to be fighting at a Devonshire or, <laughs> you know what I mean, or He's some crazy. Terminator eye. Fuck, he has, he has metal eyes, man. Cody Jones, good question. Okay. Kelly, with as many punches as Williams threw and as busy as he was, how would you have approached the fight? Would you have been aggressive and test his power, or would you have sit on the on the counter? Now, Cody. His punch, his chin. You're a boxing guy, right, Cody? Now, I'm going to break this down to you since you, you should know both styles. You obviously know Paul Williams. But let me ask you this. How many punches did I throw around? 100 or 80? 80, 80, 80, 80 to 90. 80, 90 round. And I was a bigger guy than Paul Williams. Who do you think is going to be the first one to take a step back, me or Williams, in this fight? I didn't do it against Miranda at middleweight, you not Walter you didn't do it against Taylor. I didn't do it against Taylor. I didn't even do it against Hopkins up at late heavyweight. So what I'm saying is, why would I against a guy like Paul Williams, who was a, a, an average puncher at Walter weight? He was. He was more known for his punch output. Why would I fight him at middleweight? And when I throw 90 punches around and let it and be the one to sit there and try to counter him, I would actually have Paul Williams worried about me coming forward in my punches and my power. My power was far better than Paul Williams, and that's what's going to make what made a difference. Well, your power fight. was better than Sergio Martinez's, and Sergio Martinez put him to sleep for about 30 minutes, that's, right? That's what I'm saying. So, you know, like, I, that's why I would have loved to have had the Paul Williams fight. Honestly, I don't see anything. I love Paul Williams, and I think he was – Fantastic for the sport. Um, I miss him. I at, miss Paul Williams. Yeah, but at middleweight, I don't see it being a comparison. And I see actually him coming forward with the, his aggressive style, getting him knocked out fairly quick in that fight. I, I agree. Fairly quick. Hey, you're, beyond, you're on a new video game coming out, right? Yeah, we don't know. if it, I mean, it's in the makes right now. What's the, what's the video game called? Round for Round. Round for Round. Are, are they going to make you like, uh, remember that backyard baseball game? Remember that? Where the people, they were all little oh, kids yeah. and they had the little bodies and the big fucking heads. Yeah, remember those? Like, they should make a video game, a boxing game like that with Kelly with a big giant head and a little tiny like body. Like Nintendo? Like, yeah. Or like we, like we boxing yeah. with Kelly. That'd be sweet. Dude, that would be amazing. Like give backyard. Me a, give me a signature punch and call it the Phantom Punch. The uh, yes. backyard boxing. They call it backyard and it has like the little yeah. backyard ring and shit. You're fighting like. Fucking Mike Tyson. You know, all motherfuckers, they'll put like bar stools up in the back here. I thought you would have beaten Sergio Martinez too, Nicholas. But styles do make styles. fights. Again, I, you know, I go back on the Williams or Martinez fight. Um, I hate to keep saying it, but that was not me, though. That was not an 80% Kelly. That was not even a 70% Kelly Talbot. Kelly's. King said, just put Kelly's new head on his old body. Dude, that would be... <laughs> that was not as good. Dude, you put put your 240, your 240-pound head on uh-huh, your 160-pound King. body. Uh-huh. That's a good one, homie. On your 160-pound body? Kelly with an Afro Lake Ring Kings. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> that game was fucking amazing, wasn't it, Ring Kings? You know what, Kevin? I got I to gotta come out and say this. Everybody got to listen to this one. I was, You know what? I think I could actually grow an Afro puff. And I think it's I get the Sicilian blood in me. I'm, I'm you being this serious. You look like George Jefferson. No, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 honestly, I, I, I absolutely <laughs> would. Like yeah, let me tell you why. <laughs> I was going to make a joke, all right. And I kept saying like before I retired, I wanted to like get a comb over, and I wanted like when they introduced me, like Kelly Pavlik, I was going to lick the my glove thumb and go like this and do my comb over. So I literally tried growing my hair out. Okay. And it didn't, I didn't get to the strand or the string of hair. I got like, literally, it was like curled this way, <laughs> curled that way. And it came out like a puff, <laughs> a puff. So I was like, absolutely not going to work. It said. It, it, it wouldn't work. Cody's, I, I want to do it. I Cody to go. said you had Martinez hurt at some point in the fight. 
Yeah, when I dropped him. I dropped him. him. Yeah. And you know, what did Martinez say? And he, he vouched for that. What did Martinez say? That he's never been hurt like that before, that you hit him yeah. the hardest. I thought, I, and actually, all the mirrors, until I heard him and you heard him say it. And, and Sha- Roger, Shannon Torres, he told Shannon Torres that. Yeah. I thought it was a flash knockdown. I, when I knocked him down with that, I thought it was an off balance flash knockdown, but I guess it really hurt. He him. said it was the hardest he's ever been hit. Um, what was it to? Um, oh, another thing we need to get at. We need to talk to Robert Garcia, and we need to tell him he learned how to use a Facebook Live. Robert Garcia, yeah. and he's on there every day now doing shit. Oh shit! He was laying grout. He was literally laying grout and shit in a Facebook, tile with Facebook yeah. Live, and he was on there. Just- you, I see. I seen. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Chengus, uh, Funyas. Funyas on there? He's on there all the time. He got a barbershop open. I know, I saw that. But I mean, uh, Ricky, Ricky has his hands and everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I mean, shit. This is. But hey, there's there's just there's a lot of stuff going on with boxing day, and I think boxing is getting a lot more amazing. I mean, it is. They said two point five million for the two point eight. Two point eight. Yeah, and somebody asked about somebody asked about how, what do you think about Canelo going to DAZN, the zone? I I like it. It's a big network. It is huge, and um, he is not taking a step back by going to that. No, and Ooh. I think that's I think that's the route that you're going to see boxing go to is you're going to start going to see these apps, and they're they're successful. No, he, Jeff, he never got us in ten. No, so. no, he never did. I I have some of the I have some of the old ones. The ten goose shirts. Do you have one? Nope. I'll give know. you I'll give you one. Okay. I don't want it. Oh, okay. I don't want it. Uh, Delilah says, "Stop laughing at Robert." Oh, oh, only if only if Funyaz gives it to me. No, we're not laughing at Robert, Delilah. That's not what we're doing. But yeah, we are. But he yeah. just learned. You know, he just learned to use Facebook Live, and he's on there. Like, yeah. he did talk about you on Facebook Live, though. Did he? Yes, he said you should text him and ask him. He said Kelly's one of my champions. He'll always be my champion. I want to text him now? Yeah. Um, ask him when I when I said that. Uh, he said about your. Kelly wants to come to the gym. I said, I'm texting Robert Garcia right now. Yeah, guys. I said, Kelly wants to come to the gym and he wants to take a picture next to his picture. And he said, You're always welcome, that you're one of his champions. Delilah, make sure Ricky's, Ricky forgets or he just don't care. But Ricky's given me a bunch of shirts. I'm not even going to hate on Ricky, but I got the old style. I don't got the new Ducky shirt. I'm telling Robert, I heard from a buddy on the show right now that you like your Facebook Live and that you had mentioned me. Yes, about you being his champion and you can always come to the gym and that take a picture next to your picture. We all love Robert Delilah. He's he's an amazing person. The whole family are good people. Yeah. Darren, Darren Shabbat said they just made Bevo <coughs> Pascal fight. Yeah. I wish Bivol would get a tougher test. That seems like an easy fight for him. For pa- you, pa- he's fighting Pascal. Yeah, you know that is a, a tough fight, and you know Bivol only has fourteen fights. I mean, I yeah, think he's I, I, uh, he's not, allowed to take those fights right now. You can take him for a few more. You know what I mean? Let him, let him. Hey, I think he's going to make light heavyweight very comfortably. Um, so he's going to be there for pretty much. I think he can stay there his entire career, and. He's only got 14 yeah. fights. Hey, Del- Delilah said, I promise when I get back. Yeah, Delilah, but just don't, just let Ricky mail him to Ohio because we know how things happen when you hey, mail Delilah, to Ohio. It goes to a different address. I- I'm going to ask, I'm going to get your number off James. Is that's all right? Yes. And uh, You know what? His B-ball is pu- punching and accuracy, but his power is, he has bone crunching power. Um, Christine Lopez, fighter, had fought, um, Clarkson had fought, um, had fought Bevel, Sam Clarkson, and um, she said that that power that he fe- that B- uh, Clarkson had said it was like he was getting hit with bricks. You know, I mean that's a, that's a champion yeah. saying he was. It felt like he was getting hit with bricks. That he didn't know if he was on something. It felt like he might have been on something as hard as he got hit. You know, and then when Clarkson and I'm telling as with Christine, her tr- one of the trainers told me. When she went to the when they went to the hospital, they took Clarkson to the hospital. They did not tell the doctor that he was a fighter. The doctor wanted to know when he got into a car accident. He had thought that Samuel Clarkson got into a car accident after fighting Bevo. All right. <clears throat> Let's see here. Well, I'm going to answer Cody's. Uh, Kelly, one thing I noticed on listening to Lennox call your fights, especially against Artucci, that Miranda and Taylor is how much he admired your style. He always held you in high regards. Did you ever get to speak with him about technique, or did he ever give you any advice moving forward? No, Cody. Um, Lennox, though, we were really we had a lot of mutual respect for each other, and it was awesome to watch a guy coming up the ranks, and especially heavyweight, 
and just knowing that you know he was a fan of mine and I was a fan of him and you know, there was just a lot of uh, respect there yeah. but no afterwards listen you know like these guys are busy they got a job um I, I go do the interview and then I had to get back and get that fight with the skill, you know, make the fight get my weight down. Yeah. So that was pretty much how it went. Dan said, I like Canelo moving to DAZM, but I really do, don't do like him moving up to fight fielding the same way I didn't agree with Mikey jumping up to 140. I don't like jumping between weights. You know, Dan, but you got to remember this, this sport's a business and I don't need to tell you that. But the thing is this. Mikey, Mikey's interest in the sport is not like a lot of other fighters. He's doing what's best for him financially and, and for his family. And Mikey's a big guy. He is not a guy that walks around 150, 151. You know, he's a big guy. And, and you know, if he wants to fight at 40, he handles that weight pretty well. Yeah. Um, he, he's, Mikey's not doing anything that's dangerous. Uh, he know Mikey knows his risk and, and he knows what he's doing and he's doing these moves he's making these moves for a reason that are going to benefit him and what I like about it is Mikey is his own person he don't give a shit who on the top is telling him what to do or who or who's ever by him he don't listen to his own family yeah sometimes. Mike and you know what that shows that deep down he's his own man he's his own man that has heart balls and everything else. And these are smart moves that Mikey's making. These are not dumb moves by no means at all. So there is nothing wrong with him doing that. No. Uh, a lot of these guys, listen, the big thing in boxing now is to get that recognition, whether it be if you have to jump up a weight class or not. And I'm not saying because I did it either, but your true fighters are the ones that will go wherever there is to go to, to get a big fight. To get I fought Bernard Hopkins because there was no other fight out there. I jumped two weight classes to take that fight. Because I didn't want to take the chance of anybody saying that after, especially coming off the locket fight, yeah. that now I'm ducking guys. Well, what did you? If you, I never asked you this. What, what did you hydrate to after you got to, you when you weighed in at seventy five? What did you hydrate to? Gosh, seven, I think it was seventy seven. Yeah, that you were way out of your weight. You yeah. mean? Did, I bet it was nice to eat though, wasn't and, it? And, he, and Hopkins was well over two hundred. He was, I heard he was about two ten, right? Yeah, somewhere around. Um, what, was it nice to be able to eat though? Oh yeah. What were you eating? You what kind of things were you eating? For I guess I couldn't eat. Uh, I couldn't pick out. But I, you know, I you was able. Steak, I was able to have potatoes. more pasta, steak, carbs. You know what I mean? Um, a good amount more what? than previous kids. Who, who what, was your dad taking care of your diet yeah. then too? Yeah. What was your biggest concern going into that fight? I mean, about I mean anything about Bernard Hopkins, but what was the one thing that you were concerned mostly? Dying if the check had, was going to clear. No, it was if the like, check. <laughs> like no. four rounds of. Sparring, or I mean, four four sparring sessions the entire camp. Yeah, did he did he did he have power? Yeah, but it was it was a he, the heavy power. Bernard. Yeah, it was the heavy power though. Maybe that I was moving up to late heavyweight. Yeah, was it was just like pushing pushing but, heavy. Yeah, right? and again, no matter if it was a good me or not, he you know it was all also an experience to see his knowledge and yes. his boxing IQ. He did things and you learned, and he even set me up. You know, the, Bernard Hopkins will do 90 million dirty things in a, in a fight and maybe only get one point taken off of him. <laughs> and here in that fight... I saw him stepping on your feet, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, and in that fight, he got me so frustrated that I actually got a point deducted against me against all people, Bernard Hopkins. Hit him in the nuts? Yeah, so... Um, Walter said, did you feel comfortable... He's army fighter, just like me. He, was, he fought with the Germans like I did. Did you feel comfortable at the weight when you fought Hopkins? Did you feel Go, sluggish? Going into it, I did. No, the sluggish wasn't from weight. Well, you were sick. It. Yeah, that was nothing to You do were really weight. sick. Um, There's a book out there, too, um, by Thomas Hauser. What's that book called? Can you look that book up, Justin, please? It's a book by Thomas Hauser, and it has um, it, it's a, um, it has um, who, who, Ricky Hatton on the cover? Yeah. Ricky Hatton on the cover. Um, there's a book you guys need to read. Something like Behind the Ropes or Behind the Ropes that you don't know. Behind the Ropes. It, um, he has some shorts. Thomas Hauser is one of the premier writers in boxing, and he is very, very impartial. Yeah. He talks about the story. Uh, he does two chapters in that book about the fight with Bernard Hopkins, everything that was leading up to it yeah. and during the camp. Um, about your fever, he had the doctor come in. Yeah. He talks about the doctor coming and you having a hundred. all, one. yeah, and, and Thomas Hauser is not biased or on anybody's side. No, no. He, he's writing what goes on is what goes in, in his books, you uh, know, exactly. 101 degrees and then you were spitting green shit up in the bathroom, right? I, I, I was, Did they say your your dad was like pounding on the wall? He didn't yeah, want, they yeah. were worried about you. Yeah. Um, Cody said, who was the slicker fighter? Hard to figure out, Martinez or Hopkins? 
I would say probably Hopkins at that point. Martinez, I had figured out. He I did. had him figured out. You know, I was winning the fight, but that wall. I'm going and that they hit the wall. There's nothing you could do on that. Two very good fighters. Listen, guys, I don't really want to answer. You know, this show's like to open up for other things. I talk. We talk about this at least once an episode. I know not everybody. Not everybody is. Yeah, yeah, they don't get to hear it. Um, but you know, I got there's there's no shame. I lost the two uh, Hall of Famers. Hall of Famers. So, um, best jab you've ever came up against, Kelly? I have to go ahead and say T- Taylor's jab was everything that it was uh, cracked up. Pulverizing, to wasn't it? It was. It, it was fast. Was it like that in amateurs too? Just yeah. as hard, or was it less? No, he, he, he fires it, and where he fires, even when you know it's coming, though, he just it's the natural timing of his jab. But you know, we started cheating the hand a little bit, and, and we caught on to it. It's a good thing about the pros is you got time to, you know, pick up on things like that. Yeah. Did um did he change the speed of and it? I, and actually I, the my jab became the weapon that he had to worry about. Yeah. It wasn't his jab no more. If you watch in the later rounds before the knockout, I was winning the jab. Did he change the speed up at all on his jab? Yeah. Did he? Yeah, the different angles, just a slight location. I say sometimes like boxes like like golf. Yeah. You know, I say in golf, if you're off by that much you know, compared to any other sport, that's the difference of you being in the woods for an hour or being two fairways over. Um, same in boxing, you know, if you, when you move that hand and you fire from just a little different angle, it takes that much more off of learning how to block it or finding the range. Um, was Sergio fast? Yeah, he was fast. Sergio, again now, Sergio was a very similar to his, like a Lomachenko. His feet were fast. His, yeah, which, which his hands were really fast. So, but it's hard to just focus on somebody's hands when you're trying to focus on the rest of the speed. So it makes it hard to fight people like that. And I can understand like Lomachenko's opponents. It's hard. That's why I was saying it's not that Lomachenko is that these other guys are that much faster than Lomachenko. It's totally different because everything else on Lomachenko is fast. These guys are mainly fast with their hands as where Lomachenko is doing all these different uh, angles. Amanda said, Kelly needs to read YouTube. Nate is on there. He said, hi. Oh. Hi, Nate. Hey, Nate. What's going on? We just got Nate through YouTube, too, We got Amanda. Nate. So no cussing, because Nate's on. We can't cuss when Nate's on, guys. He's, I think we actually done very We've very done well with the cussing. Yes. Um, but yeah, we can't cuss with Nate. I promise we wouldn't no. cuss with Nate no more. Must be all that church we went to the last two weeks. It was. Kel, it says, what about Jacobs and his opponent, his, his opponent next month? I got Jacobs. Jacobs, I think, is the, is the, is the, pro, is the best in the middleweight division. Right now, I, I have him. Um, I think Jacobs is better than Canelo. I think I don't think he's better than Canelo. I think he's bigger. I, I think I think that he could use his size and his boxing ability, which mainly is going to be the size to help him win a fight like that against Canelo. Um, if he fights the way he knows knows how. Cody says the rumor is Pack and Broner yeah. in January. My opinion is that Manny smokes kid. I don't think so. I think Broner wins that fight. I'm gonna say Broner beats Manny Pacquiao. I don't want to really uh, pick a winner yet because I don't know what Pacquiao is going to show up. You understand, it's kind of easier to go with Broner because you're talking about a 41-year-old 40, year 41-year-old Pacquiao who's been in some wars. I mean, my God, just the three Marquez fights well, alone. Four four Marquez. I, well, you know, I think boxing fans and media people and even fighters, they have short memories. They, they, they think Broner is Matisse because Pacquiao looked good against a guy like Matisse who's come straight yeah. to you and he was more washed up than him. That does... Broner is making big, big changes with Kevin Cunningham. He looked really fucking good. I'm sorry. He looked really good with Jesse Vargas. Yeah. And I mean, he did. He, I think I, I, don't, I think he lost the fight, but I think he looked really good. And I think he might beat Manny Pacquiao. Who, I guess it, that comes down to, I think it's a great fight for boxing, though. It's an interesting fight for boxing. Mm-hmm. I think Broner is on the borderline his way out of the sport. Yeah. I truly do. And same with Pacquiao. Pacquiao yeah. was making a, a couple loud noises towards the end of his exit. Oh, yeah. Um, but I think also that he could show up and that could be a 41-year-old Pacquiao. Yeah. Uh, who is the best? Who is the best? Crawford, Thurman, or Spence? Kelly, I, I don't even have Thurman in there right now because we haven't seen nothing of yeah, him. I, got, I would put Porter in there before I'd put Thurman at this point. Absolutely. I got uh, Crawford, Porter, Spence, and Spence. I got Crawford. I got I got Crawford, Spence, and Porter, the top three welterweights right now. Yeah. And it's just because we haven't seen Thurman. It's nothing on Thurman. We just haven't seen Thurman yeah. in there. You know what I mean? And that's why. Broner's that's better awesome. not talking about taking Manny's side piece. I, I think Broner is just um, – there's more left in Broner than – and it depends. Let's get – I think Broner with Kevin Cunningham is a <laughs> different Adrian Broner. He's – 
Kevin Cunningham's not the type of trainer who's going to put up with Broner's mess. He's not going to let him. He's going to make sure he's in shape. I think Broner has not changed since he's been with uh, Cunningham. I think I saw a difference when he fought um, I don't Vargas. think Gervonta has. Well, Gervonta's a knucklehead. So I don't know how much that, that discipline is really um, coming wow. in. That's Eddie, Eddie, that's a really vague question. Best boxer of all time, Kelly. Go ahead, man. I still got to go with Leonard. Best boxer of all time, pure boxer, I would say it was Roy Jones. But or is he talking about boxer or are you talking about like a fighter overall? Yeah, best I fighter. don't know. He said best boxer. That just Kevin, that's just Broner's mouth. You know what I mean? But maybe you could teach Broner how to move his feet. Well, yeah, that's just him, you know. Connor, I've been oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry, you know, go no, ahead. No, uh, Dan Connor. Watch for British 147 pound prospect Josh Kelly. We've been that's watching. That, is that the one that fights like a Roy Jones, White Roy Jones, Lomachenko? Yeah, kinda. yeah. We'll watch, but we'll keep an eye on we're, it. We're, I mean, we're seeing him, but he hasn't. When he steps up in competition, we'll be more aware. And of what's more going so on. than not, guys like that with that flashy style uh, that you know, that early, more so than not, end up not winning. You know, being nothing big in the sport. And um, like I said, I'm not. A lot of these British guys, and I'm not, I'm not shitting on the Brit fighters guys, but a lot of them come up fast, and then they kind of plateau out as soon, uh, as long as you're not Calzaghe, who's Welsh, but Calzaghe was one of the rare ones. Yeah. But you had Hatton coming through, steamrolling everybody. Oh wait, we had that's, that was one of the matchups we were talking about. Yeah. Calzaghe versus uh, who? Who was it? Andre Ward. Andre Ward. Calzaghe versus Andre Ward, guys. Wouldn't that be yeah, a fight? Yeah. That was the one. I'd have to go with. Hell's Augie in that, dude. Unfortunately, I would. Yeah. Oh, or what, what about... Oh, shh, man. Tony Baker, Josh Kelly's business. Yeah, Tony, but... Well, he only has eight or nine fights. We don't know. We, we don't know. And again, like I said, more people than not ha that have that style has not ended up making it. And you know, they're talking about Roy Jones is the greatest. The reason I say Roy Jones is the greatest boxer at that time is because you... It was electrifying at the time. You didn't see that. You didn't see this guy. I mean, even Leonard was electrifying, but not the same way. Roy Jones would hit you and lights out. Yeah. It'd be over. Yeah. Chuck Leonard wasn't going to put your lights out <coughs> like that. Well, Cody fired one in there. Ward versus Prime Jones. I would have to go with Jones. I, absolutely. Nothing against Ward. Hey, listen, it's hard to do that because Ward went undefeated and beat people. Yes. And like I said, Ward for the last half four years that he was fighting was – well deserving of the pound for pound, but I just think Styles, I think him trying to get on the inside and rough up Jones wouldn't have happened. And I think he would have got caught with some quick shots that he didn't see coming. And we know Ward has got dropped by punches like Calz that. Calzaghe had a whoop Ward's ass. Calzaghe, dude, he was the most underrated fighter. Yes, and I think I think uh, Bernard, uh, prime Bernard Hopkins would have beat Ward too. I think prime uh, Hopkins that, would That would have been a good one. But you know who I liked the yeah. idea of? Oscar De La Hoya at 130 and Lomachenko at 130. I, I, I think Oscar would have beat Lomachenko. Ooh. At 35? I, I think 35, so. I think Oscar would have beat him I, just I in the size and the, the power. And especially experience. If, if, if Oscar caught Lomachenko the same way Lenars caught him, he wouldn't have got up. Yeah. I got to make the answer to this question. All right. Calzaghe versus Froch. Calzaghe. Yeah. Listen, I'm sorry. I've seen Kel uh, Froch fight, and believe me, I would have loved to have had that fight. And that was talked about. Yeah. And I'm not just saying this. Froch, again, I'm going on a Jermaine Taylor, who was pretty much done when he fought Froch, put a whipping on Froch in that fight. And, and, and if those knockdowns didn't happen in the last round, that's a clear, easy decision for Jermaine Taylor. You don't think? Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. I was reading something else. Oh, Cody says Juan Mel Marquez and Cody at 40. No, Juan was not a, a 147 no. guy. He he couldn't maintain that. That was He was not no. good at that weight. Cotto. Juan Manuel Marquez was good at 30, 35, and maybe 40. But tough at 40. 47, he was a little small. But I think uh, Walter's right. I think Oscar does beat Lomachenko. Yeah, three minutes. Okay. Yeah. Three Dan, minutes, guys. So we're going to try to hurry up and get as much questions. Dan wants to know what you think about Ryan Garcia. I think he's up and coming. I think... I think he needed to humble himself a little bit with that last couple of fights to kind of get back to where he... I think they should. They need to move him carefully. Yeah. I think Virgil Ortiz Jr. is the, is the, is the best of those exactly. prospects. Absolutely. I think Gabriel Flores is one of the best, too. Gabriel yeah. Flores and Virgil Ortiz. I, I think Ryan Garcia, they need to watch and move him very carefully. One, don't get excited with him yet. Oscar 
Oscar at 140. I think 35 and Lomachenko would have been good. 140, I, I still think Oscar was a better fighter. I think 140, definitely even more so Oscar. Oscar stayed around 40 for quite a while, you know. He, he I mean. Do you uh, think Lara beat Can- I had Canelo up slightly. I actually had Lara up. I, I actually had Lara beating Canelo. But um, I don't know, man. I, 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 I don't know. I, it's what you, I think it's, and you know, I think it's how you score fights. It's what you look for. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And I could see where you would have Canelo and other people have Canelo. I just thought Laura put a great boxing clamp on I, that I, see, I agree with Cody. I think Canelo beat Larry. He, he says I, uh, Canelo beat Larry with body shots. Oscar Canelo at 54. I have Oscar. <laughs> but Cody, it seems like nobody likes to count body shots. Or that they don't work. Yeah. They don't count. I did too, King. I had him got a couple points. What about Oscar Canelo at 154? Oh. Canelo? Yeah. I, I truly think uh, De La Hoya above 147. Yeah, he wasn't uh, the same he, guy. He wasn't, yeah. I mean, look what you got. You had the kid from Germany beat him up pretty yeah. good. and. But that was at 160. That was uh, uh, yeah. Felix Sturm. Sturm, yeah. yeah. But it was 50. He just didn't look as good at 54. I, I, think the, I think the best Oscar we've ever seen was Chavez, one. I think th- at that night, I think Oscar was unbeatable. That night he fought Chavez. And then yeah. also when he I thought Fernando was a great showing. Oh, I did too. But uh Trinidad. That seven rounds of yeah. Trinidad was perfect. I still don't understand that. That's where I'm going back on. How did you they had to have gone back and erased the scorecard? They had to have. There's no way he won he won all seven rounds and ran four. Yeah. He ran four, let's be honest. He did. He lost those rounds. He but you seven to four is seven to four. So exactly. That's what I'm saying. They had to they have did. erased. Oh God. It was they fucked him. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. But no, they messed Oscar over. They really they did. did. They, yeah, they had to. I mean, like I was saying, you can't go back and erase all them rounds. Canelo versus Hagler. I'm going to piss a lot of people off. I say Canelo beats Hagler. Yeah. I just watched that. Uh, they had it on uh, ESPN Classic the other night. They had Hagler, uh, Leonard, and then they had Hagler, Hearns. Let me st- let me tell you why. Hagler did not do well against counterpunchers. Hmm. Um, Leonard... Boxed his eyes out. An old Leonard boxed his an eyes old out. Leonard. An old Leonard. In 87, right? What do you think Canelo would do? <clears throat> Somebody, Canelo has a great chin. Hagler ain't knocking him out because Hagler wasn't a one-punch knockout artist. And Hagler was a good amount smaller than Canelo. He was a lot smaller. I mean, you you, you met Hagler. <clears throat> yeah. you, you stood next to him. How tall was Hagler? Well, he may have shrunk, shrunk in age. But, I mean, he is in his mid-60s, late 60s. Okay, let's put him at his prime at 5'9", right? Yeah. What was he, 5'7", five, 5'8", five, when you saw him? Yeah. So he's about 5'9". Yeah, Canelo's about five nine, but just again, he may not have shrunk. My dad didn't. My dad's sixty eight, but <clears throat> but we give him the benefit of yeah, we we'll give him the benefit. But so yeah, he's smaller than Canelo. Yes, I agree. So um, I think we hit everything. We did. We hit everything today. We even built up some sweat and got a little workout in. Yep. And listen, yo, check out uh, David Smith. Your dude, Canelo has some of the best body shots. He sure does, David. Tune in. Uh, Go to uh, YouTube, share, subscribe, like, and ring that little bell. Ring that little bell that lets you know when the show is coming on. And also like, share, and subscribe. Mainly subscribe. Thank you, King. I appreciate it. <clears throat> Con of six years ago and Floyd at 140. I think Con. <laughs> really? I, would, I don't see him getting knocked out. I, I don't know. I would, I'm going to go with Floyd at six years ago. It's, I know. It's so hard. Why would I even? I think. Uh, I think. I think Khan would get frustrated with the Floyd because Floyd just yeah. made you look. But Khan was long and fast, and De La Hoya frustrated. Mayweather, De La Hoya got tired. Yeah. But you can't. You know what? I, I don't know. I'm going to have to go with Mayweather, too, because. Diego Crowley was you, long and tall, too. Yeah, though. you can't go against Mayweather. He was that good. And every time you went against him, he looked better. <laughs> he lost money. <laughs> yeah. So. I don't know. I think, I think, I actually think that um, Floyd Mayweather may have been one of the greatest fighters ever lived. When they say best boxer ever, yep. I forgot about Floyd Mayweather. My all all time great uh, pound for pound is, is Leonard, and that's a close one with with Mayweather right now. Yeah, <clears throat> I bet Mayweather is too. Have you met Floyd? Yeah. Okay. I met. Him. He was there for all the ass whoopings I was laying down in Vegas. He came. He would come in. He remembered me from. He's that. a he's a little guy too, isn't he? <clears throat> yeah. I met him in the amateurs, and I've seen him in the pros. Um, he's a nice. He, he's not what people think he is. But thank you, Melissa. I appreciate it. Gravity will never diminish the two sides in the sport. You guys are huge. Ah, Steve Kelly is. I'm not. But thanks, Steve. I'm getting there. 
Steve, Steve is like the ultimate bullshitter. Steve, will, Steve is a businessman. Do you know what I mean? He will fucking build you up, and he's waiting to drop the hammer on you. So I see what he's doing. He I blows see. so much smoke up your ass can make your liver smell like a brisket. Right? Yeah, I see what he's doing. <laughs> Sugar Ray. You know what, Dan? A lot well, of people say... Answering the questions. How are we going to stick to a program? Sorry. Sugar Ray, I, I didn't see enough. Black and white footage doesn't do him justice. Do you know what I mean? And yeah, he could be, but I don't know. But hey, guys. Subscribe, like, and share, share, and hit the bell icon. Ring that bell. Bing, bing, bing. But mainly share and subscribe. And we will see you next Tuesday. We will see y'all. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you, guys.